My plan is to introduce you to biofeedback, review its medical and consumer applications, provide a live demonstration, and hopefully leave some time for questions. In 1973, I discovered the nascent field of biofeedback at the American Psychology Convention, which fortuitously was held in Montreal. At that time, the equipment was dominated by large laboratory-type instruments, which were far from portable, as you can see from this photograph. Suddenly, I discovered a way to combine my engineering skills with a humanistic approach to healing and quickly designed a simple biofeedback device, first in a pill container and then in a block of wood. I showed them to my family and friends, and um, they were all amazed at how the devices responded to their emotions. One of my friends, Lawrence Klein, was particularly fascinated by the concept and said, Let's sell these, and so started Thought Technology. And this is our first product, the GSR-1, made from walnut and gold-plated brass. So before I introduce you to biofeedback, I want to leave you with a little teaser. What does India's Olympic gold medal winner have in common with Italy's soccer team and NASA? So think about that. So what is biofeedback? Biofeedback is a technique to enhance personal awareness and control over your mind and body. It uses electronic sensors to monitor physiological signals, such as heart rate, which provides information about them through visual or auditory means, so you can learn to control them. And neurofeedback is a subspecialty of biofeedback, which focuses on controlling brainwave activity. So how does biofeedback work? Whenever we provide a person with feedback about a biological process, that information enables the individual to both increase awareness and gain conscious control over the process. The same is true of any skill acquisition, such as tennis, where visual feedback provides the necessary information to make continuous adjustments to hit the ball. So on the slide you see here, your brain gives off the motor command to tell the muscle to, uh, to flex, we watch that happen, we assess it, and then we change it. So don't flex so much, flex a little, a little less, move to the left, move to the right. And that's the loop, and we can do that with any physiological signal. Biofeedback shares several core values with complementary and alternative medicine. It requires adopting a holistic view of mind, body, and spirit, while taking an active role in the healing process by encouraging positive behavioral changes. This approach is in sharp contrast to the use of medications and other invasive techniques where something is done to you. A recent report in the clinical efficacy of biofeedback therapies concluded, biofeedback is appropriate for those who prefer to take control of their own health or who don't respond well to traditional medical techniques. This is a list of the most common biofeedback parameters. On the right, I've overlaid on a human body where the signals usually come from. So over here, we have brainwave activity, EEG, electroencephalogram. This is muscle activity, which can be from any muscle. EKG, which can be from the chest or other locations. Respiration, which can be from the thoracic area or from the abdominal area. And we have skin conductance activity and temperature and blood volume pulse. And I'm going to be talking about all these, so don't memorize them yet. So the first devices I designed monitored skin conductance activity, also referred to as GSR. That's the name for the GSR-1. These devices impose a very small voltage across the skin through metal contacts and measure how easily current flows through the skin. As anxiety rises, both skin pore size and electrolyte concentration in the pores increase, producing a rise in the current through them, which is easily monitored by a biofeedback device. Skin conductance is a basic signal used in lie detection. The most common use of these devices are to assist in the treatment of stress-related conditions, to complement psychotherapy, and for performance enhancement. It's also valuable to train skin conductance outside the clinic using inexpensive portable devices, 
like our GSR2, whose tone rises with increasing stress and drops as one relaxes. The goal is to teach yourself to maintain a low tone or quickly lower the tone during stressful situations. This is the little unit. It actually predates the mouse. It's 1976 or so. And I will dial it in so you can hear the tone. Now, if I were nervous, the tone would go up. I'll look at all of you. Take a deep breath. So the rising tone, if I hit my hand, let's wait. So the rising tone indicates an increase in stress level, and as you relax, the tone comes down. The idea is to train yourself to bring the tone down quickly under stressful situations. In 1970, Dr. Elmer Green hooked up a yogi named Swami Rama, who could both obliterate his pulse and easily modify hand temperature. When it monitored uh, during meditation, the Swami produced huge increases in alpha brainwave activity, the slow frequency activity. This study fostered the popular idea that alpha feedback could produce instant meditation and enlightenment without years of practice. It radically enhanced popular interest in biofeedback, and it's not quite so simple, folks. I'm sure those of you who have done have meditated for years, you can't just look at one parameter and assume it's going to work. Neurofeedback monitors both fast and slow brain cortical potentials. This photo shows use of a typical 32-channel EEG cap used during assessment. However, neurofeedback uh, training usually focuses on just one or two signals derived from the head. The goal of the training is to normalize or enhance each patient's brainwave pattern during specific activities. It's most frequently used to treat addictions, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, learning disabilities, post-traumatic stress disorder, and migraine headaches. Here's an example of a typical training screen for kids, which teaches the simultaneous enhancement and suppression of specific brainwave frequencies. The goal is to make the electron pick up gold coins with the wheelbarrow. Now I'll go into more detail about this type of feedback shortly. 